Welcome back to my reloading bench, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for liking, sharing, and subscribing. I want to throw a quick shout out there to uh, AccurateShooter.com. Um, they shared one of my videos a little bit back. Helps me extend the reach of the channel. I appreciate it very much. So, in today's video, um, we're going to do some reloading uh, for my six arc again. Um, I've been wanting to make a coyote round, so testing out some 75 grain V Max and some 87 grain V Max. Um, but the problem that I've been running into is that on the lighter side of things, like the 58, 60, uh, the 75 grainers, the CFE 223 really doesn't uh, do well down there at the bottom. It doesn't give you optimal speeds. Um, it also is temperature sensitive by a bit. Um, using Lever Evolution, this stuff runs across the board with all projectiles, does a pretty good job. But let me tell you, that is some dirty burning stuff, uh, especially when you're using a can on a gun like what I do with mine. Them cases come out just dirtier than hell. Takes forever for them to clean. So, um, been looking for a different powder to use, and what I'm trying here is the AR Comp. Um, the only problem is, is none of the reload manuals use AR Comp in there. Even online on Sniper's Hide, Accurate Shooter, um, multiple other forums, um, guys said, oh yeah, you know, it could work for it, but nobody had any reloading data. So, luckily a buddy of mine uh, had quick loads on his computer, so I had him throw them in there. He got me some what should be about maximum charge weights for it, uh, and some velocities. The only difference, um, he used a 22 inch barrel uh, in the profile on the computer. I've got an 18 inch barrel, but I'm using a can. So, the velocities are probably going to vary a little bit, but probably not much. Um, so, first thing I already did earlier today was when doing experimental stuff, step it up in tenths. I was just looking for, oh, an average velocity, seeing if it kind of coincided with the QuickBooks data given. Um, just seeing if it would function the gun. I mean, that's always a big one with a gas gun. You know, if it doesn't cycle it, it doesn't matter how accurate the stuff is. It doesn't work. Um, which it did. Um, and it did kind of run right with max charge right along with quick loads. Um, unfortunately, though, um, today we're not going to be able to get any velocities out of the loads that I'm doing <laughs> because... When checking this, we got to uh, four shots. Um, at 28.6 grains, we got 29.82. That was the last reading that I got because I was just shooting downward at a target um, with this gun being an 18 inch barrel and an 18 inch forearm. Um, I can't hook my magneto speed to it um, because I've got the Sporter and not the V3. So I can't put it on the can. So I was using my old chronograph and uh, shooting downward at an angle like that. On the third shot, I backed up, had to pick up that piece of brass to check to see if uh, it had any signs of pressure or anything on it and just didn't step back forward. <laughs> Immediately pulled the trigger on number four and unfortunately blew right through the old chronograph so yeah that thing's toast after 15 years of faithful service so all right uh let me show you what we got going on here so along with the ar comp powder um i'm using federal gold metal primers in it um using hornady brass for all of it um, I already checked the pressure nodes. They're looking good. 
I'm only doing three shots at each powder charge because I don't have very much brass. Um, all the stuff that I've got has all been from loaded ammunition and I've probably only got about 150 rounds right now so I'm only using three normally I would use five but on each one of these I've gone ahead and marked you know, how many grains we got in there so we got three at each charge weight Give you an example here of a OCW test um, that I've run on my Ackley Improved. So what we're going to be looking for out there is when the group shrinks up versus then when it blows out. We're judging that harmonics of kind of blown up, shrinks down, blows out, kind of comes back, blows out again. And then we hit you know max pressure. So let's take this stuff outside and we'll. Uh, get to shooting these things let's shoot these 87 grainers first i'm getting a bit of heat distortion down there so who knows how all these groups are going to show up for me here all right and centers are dancing in that heat distortion a little bit but let's send them anyway Yeah, those aren't real close. Also not good looking. Twenty six point four grains. Hopefully these groups start tightening back up. Maybe, maybe this powder just isn't for the heavies. Take a little bit more time on this here, settle in a little longer. Oh yeah, all three of them are touching. That went from pretty bad to real good. Well, let's let this thing cool down and we'll go down there and take a look at them groups. The thing I want to show you here is these things, for being run suppressed, really are not that dirty. And that's really kind of what I'm looking for over running that lever evolution, so. So far, so good. Having to shoot across this bunch of ground right here and just be right at ground level is causing a bunch of heat distortion. But let's take a look at these groups 
see what the first three we got going on. Well, that's those two are nice. I don't mind that. That one there really blew out. But that one going from that to that, that's doing pretty good. cooled down enough let's do the That one's looking real good too. Need to get an ambi safety put on this thing so I can get it from that side. All right, 26.8. Pulled that one a little low. All right. That group don't look too bad. So. Last one, 27 grains. Let's see what she does. They're semi getting a little bit of uh, ejector marks in them. So this one is definitely gonna be the last, last powder charge we go up. Not a bad group. So, here's what we got. 26, 26, 2, 26, 4. Really pumped them in there. Same thing with 26, 6. 26, 8 starts opening up. And actually really 27 wasn't that bad now this one I know I was low on that one that one probably should be about right here probably also wondering why when doing a OCW test I don't do one shot each and I'll tell you why because I have screwed that up and shot the wrong target way too many times so I just go ahead, shoot them, all three per, and call it good. Part of the reason that I do that is because, kind of like a seating depth test, you don't round robin a seating depth test. Or if I'm shooting at a competition or if I'm out, you know, <laughs> just shooting targets, doing whatever, 10 shot groups, five shot groups. I don't get around robbing them. When you step up to the line in a PRS match, you gotta shoot them one through 10 or one through 12, whatever it is. You don't get to let the barrel cool down. You don't have time in between. We're not doing random samplings. Your gun and your load has to shoot 
shot one through ten where it's supposed to be so that's how I test them all right all right 75 grainers here we go see what uh, see what we can do here That one's looking pretty good. So we got uh, 28.4. Let's go around here. Gotta capture this on both cameras here. Not a bad group. Okay, so, yeah, not bad. I mean, it's kind of open. These ones here, but that one there, I mean, that's, I can cover that up with the thumb. I mean, that's a, that's a one inch sticker right there. So, I mean, that's not doing too bad, but the placement of it from being a little bit lower has definitely risen right there. Let this barrel cool down just another minute or two and uh, we'll shoot the next couple. All right. So let's do all the 28.6. It's enough messing with all the high frame rate stuff using the Sony. We'll just use the other camera here. All right. Like that group a lot. Twenty-eight point eight. These ought to be doing about. I don't know. I'd assume somewhere around three thousand feet per second.
Yep, those are a bit right. Two of the last three here. Right there and right there. We're starting to get some ejector marks on there. All right, last group. 29 greens. Let's see what we can do here. That point ain't look good. Oof, even wider, right? Yeah, this group's falling apart here. Deal with that is. There she goes. Well, touch the last shot. Let's go down and take a look. All right. So here's what we got. Yeah, tightening up a little bit, kind of coming around. Definitely tightened up. That was the one that I definitely liked. That's, uh, I did get that chronographed yesterday. That was 29.82 is what that was. Those two aren't bad. I don't know if I pulled that one or not, but according to looking at this group, yeah, we're moving more right. Kind of getting out of the harmonic node that we got going on. Let's take all this inside. And so, looking these over with the 75 green bullet. Our initial was fairly open and a little bit lower. Second one kind of follows that same pattern. Once we get into the third one though, that group tightened up to about 0.460. It also raised just a little bit higher than those two. The fourth group is about the same height, a little bit more right there, but pretty close to the same height. And way tighter, 0.360. Then we get back to shifting a little further to the right on the next two groups. So, somewhere between here and here is probably going to be money. That group right there, I mean, regardless at, you know, three-eighths of an inch or so, um, that's going to be dead coyotes all day, every day. Without using a chronograph, it doesn't even matter. I mean, we know that that's around, uh, what was it? 2980 somewhere in there so regardless of standard deviation that group's just going to straight up shoot you know it'll probably do well out to three four hundred yards uh in the second part of this i'm going to take these out to range um probably run them to at least 600 yards who knows maybe try to run that once we get our final point out to maybe even 800 yards Looking at this one here, again, same thing. First couple were fairly open, high. We get into the third and the fourth one, and all of a sudden we see them tighten way up in here. This 87 grainer, I mean, the proof research barrel on this, on this gun is just hammering with these lighter ones. I wish my uh, 223 Ackley proof barrel would shoot this good, but... And that one's probably going to get replaced, but this one, this one is shooting. I think we'll probably run in between those two. Getting into here, there was a couple of them where 
you can start seeing ejector marks on there. So I don't think, even though that's a pretty tight group, I mean, even in between there, you're still running somewhere, oh, just over half inch, 0.560. But getting into these here, and yeah, that's uh, probably about point three yeah that's that's uh really knocking it out right there overall i'm pretty happy with uh how things worked out today i mean them groups came in pretty good i mean you can see that kind of node it's bigger shrink down move just a little bit i mean there's a node there with that powder um, and with those projectiles on both of them, that's going to work. It doesn't matter what the SD is. It doesn't matter whether it's 5 or whether it's 15. Um, those two rounds are going to do pretty well, especially for shooting coyotes, you know, at anywhere between 300 and 400 yards. I mean, they're going to hang in there pretty good. It's going to be more about having the right drop on the gun, trying to shoot a coyote at 400 than what it is for bullet dispersion on that one so yeah i'm pretty happy um i mean this thing's turning out to be a pretty good little tack driver the omega 300 doesn't sound too bad on it i think it uh sounds a little bit better on my 7 prc that i got the other day but I'm going to take both of them out to the range, probably stretch them out. Um, I'm betting that that thing will do pretty good at range, see how far we can get it strung out. Um, if you want me to do another uh, video reviewing that Seekin 7 PRC, I mean, I can make one of those. Just drop me a note in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'm going to finish this up. In part two, we'll go ahead, run them across chronograph, like I said, stretch them out. So, till next time.